Hi and welcome to vlog number 10. That's right, double digits. This vlog has gone viral. We're now up to 188 subscribers, which is crazy. I can't believe that many people are enjoying watching my videos. So thank you very much for subscribing. It is motivating me to make more videos. Um, so yeah, if you do like the content, then please hit subscribe. Um, this week, we're gonna be looking at this. It's the GoPro Hero Max. Um, I think it is such a creative tool. I think people are put off by it because it's a 360 degree camera and people are like, I don't need a 360 degree camera. I have a GoPro already that um, just sits in a box. I video stuff and then do nothing with the video. Those are common complaints and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, this camera solves a lot of the problems. I think number one problem that I had with a normal action camera was that it was always pointing in the wrong direction. I didn't capture quite the right angle. Um, with this, no longer an issue because you capture every angle and then you just get the right one afterwards. Uh, and that's it, the reframe part of this camera is where the real power is. And it's not just about pointing it in the right direction. Um, you can be really creative and create some really kind of cool uh, camera transitions and um, really engaging content with it. So yeah, I think it's a really cool creative tool. So um, hopefully if you watch all this video, I'll convert you to it. In this video, I'm gonna cover everything, <laughs> right from mounting it to your helmet to get a really nice POV, all the way through to exporting your video to YouTube and everything you need in between. You should have no excuses for not knowing how to do it if you watch this video. Um, there is loads of content in it, so please use the timestamps that I've put in, um, but I'm just gonna go through now briefly all the points that I'm gonna cover in this video. Um, I'm gonna start off by um, showing you how I mount this to my helmet to get a really nice POV angle. Uh, then I'll show you how to get the footage off this onto your PC. I'm going to go through all the software that you need to have installed on your PC to um, start editing. Um, I'll show you how to convert the footage that comes off this into a format that you can then use in Adobe Premiere. I'll show you how to set up a project and a sequence in Adobe Premiere. Uh, I'll show you how to then put that footage that you've converted into Adobe, um, and then I'll show you how to use the plugin that GoPro have made to help you reframe and do quite a few little creative things um, with the footage that you've shot. Um, I'll then wrap it all up by showing you the export settings that I use to um, export a video for YouTube. So if any of that sounds interesting, then keep watching. Okay, let's now have a look at how I mount the GoPro Max to my helmet to get a really nice POV angle. Hi guys, so this is the setup that I use for getting most of my POV shots. Um, as you can see, it's a bell helmet um, and it's got the detachable chin guard, um, which is ideal. It means that I can take this off and ride up the hills with it as an open face helmet and just have this chin guard with the camera um, strapped to my bag. Uh, it doesn't really feel like I'm bringing out loads of kit to get any um, shots or anything. Um, the other great thing about this is that because it's mounted here, I can get shots of me. So if I'm talking to the camera, I can uh, kind of uh, reorientate it and you can see my eyes. Um, and also you get a really good view. It's just like the, what I'm seeing when I'm riding down something. You might be thinking that looks like it's in the way and you won't be able to see where you're going. But in reality, because you're mostly riding down a hill like this, you're looking out over the top of it and it's you, you barely notice it there. Um, and how I've managed to get this set up is I've used a, I think it's called a J bracket or something like that. Um, it's a GoPro bracket that pokes through. I think they've got a new version of this now, but it's the old version that I'm using and it pokes through. And then I've got a short extension. Um, and that short extension means that I can just mount it that bit higher um, and get the, the looking back at my eyes shot. Um, and it also gives you a more close to a line of sight so you don't see lots of the handlebars. Um, uh, yeah, I, I find it's really good, obviously, because it's on the helmet and um, part of my head, you get that kind of stabilization from my head as well. Um, the one negative with this setup though, and what I'm looking at trying to resolve with this ride, is I'm trying some different audio settings because it's so close to where my mouth is. 
you hear all my heavy breathing and currently there's a lot of that because I'm very unfit. <sighs> Um, but yeah, that is the one negative, but if you put music over the top of it, or if it's not that peddly, then you won't notice the, uh, the heavy breathing so much, but <sighs> it is a bit of an issue, um, because you, your mouth's right next to that, um, microphone. But, um, apart from that, I think it's a really good setup because I... <laughs> I barely notice it's there. The only thing is that I wouldn't normally, for a lot of the riding that I'm filming, wear a full face helmet. Okay, here's a simple one. Let's have a quick look at how to move the files from your GoPro onto your PC. Okay, so you've been out, you've got yourself some rad POV, it's time to plug your GoPro in. So you plug it in and switch the GoPro on. Uh, the screen will say USB connected, and then you'll get this pop-up window. You need to just click through and find your files. There's three types of files for each 360 video. Uh, the THM is just the thumbnail file. The LRV is the low resolution file, which is what the app uses. Um, just while you're um, editing it, and then it will then draw on the .360 to create the final file. So the .360 is your full resolution version of the file. Um, and if I copy and paste that onto my computer, we can work with it. You can see that this file is nearly four gigabytes in size, which is a five minute and 40 second video clip. So the file size is big and when you do the conversion into the file format that can be used in Adobe Premiere, the file gets even bigger. So you're gonna to need to make sure you've got plenty of space on your computer to do this. I've got an external hard disk, which is a solid state one, which is a terabyte big. And um, after a couple of vlogs, I'd even filled that up. So I needed to get another external hard disk to store all my old files on. So just to give you an idea that um, storage is an issue and if you're gonna be um, thinking about doing this, you're going to want to factor that in as a cost because it's not just the cost of the camera and the laptop, you've got to have the storage as well. Um, you can see it's taking a while to pull this across. I'll use the uh, magic of YouTube and speed this up, I think. Okay, now let's have a look at the software you need, where to find it, and how to install it. This might seem like a bit of a boring subject, but if you haven't done this already, then do not skip this section. It's gonna save you a lot of time. Um, there are a few things you have to have installed, so let's just go and have a look at that now. Okay, so next up, if this is the first time you're doing this, you're gonna to go to the Microsoft Store um, and search for HEVC. Uh, and this is a video decoder that you'll need to have on your computer. Uh, there should be a free version available, um, but I couldn't find it on the store, so I ended up paying for the, um, it's only 79p, so um, I didn't think it was a big deal, but you should be able to find a free version of it, but you will need to have it installed on your computer. One more thing you're going to want to download from the Microsoft Store is the GoPro Player app. looks like this that one's free so just download that one I've already got it installed okay next up you're going to need to download Adobe Premiere Pro um, this will require a Adobe license and that's the expensive bit I'm afraid you're going to be looking at either $52 or £40 for all the Adobe Suite apps um, that's per month if you're a student or a teacher, then you'll get a discount and it'll be roughly $19 or £16 per month. Um, like I say, that does get you all the apps that Adobe make um, and it is worthwhile if this is your first time downloading not just Premiere but After Effects because the GoPro plugin will work for both apps. Okay, I'm guessing that most people watching this will already have Adobe installed, so I'm gonna just skip over this. Um, if you haven't and you're thinking, wow, that sounds expensive, 
this isn't for me, then don't forget that you've got the GoPro Quick app on your phone that you can edit the footage for free. Um, and also the GoPro Player app on your Windows PC where you can edit the footage. So there are options if you don't want to spend loads of money on Adobe Premiere Pro. But if you want all the functionality, then you're going to have to pay the money, I'm afraid. Next, you want to download the GoPro FX Reframe plugin from the GoPro website. I'll pop a link in the description on where to find this. Um, it downloads as a zip. You just need to extract that and then run the little program that's inside. That will automatically put in the plugin into the correct file location for both um, Adobe Premiere and After Effects. Um, if you're interested to know where that file ends up, um, then um, I'll show you now. It's just in here. Um, so maybe you um, have a location that you normally store them, you might want to change it. Okay, now let's have a look at how we can convert that .360 file that comes off your GoPro into a format that you can use and edit in Adobe Premiere. And now it should be a simple case of grabbing your file and just um, dropping it onto the GoPro Player app and it should open up. And now you can go File, Export As, and the highest quality is the 5.6K. And if you don't see this bit, then you just need to click the advanced options and that will allow you to be able to switch off world lock and horizontal leveling if you want. One frustrating thing is they've never fixed this the whole time. Um, you can't do anything with the 360 audio, which is really frustrating um, because it does cause some glitches. Um, but I'll leave the horizontal level on, switch the world lock off. I'll have it in the highest 5.6K. Um, and the Cineform codec. Um, there's no point in my mind going for these uh, the 4K option because that's essentially what you get out of the, um, the phone app. Um, the disadvantage with going with the 5.6K is just how big the files end up. So, yep, we'll click next. And I'm just going to pop the file into this folder here that I've already got click save and now it's going to start doing the process now you can already see it's not moving very fast this is going to take quite some time um, you can queue videos up for export but from my experience i wouldn't do any more than three at a time because it can crash so it's taken my computer about 20 minutes to export that file. Um, obviously, if you've got a faster computer, a more modern computer, it'll do it a lot quicker. But um, give you an indication on file size, the original file size was just uh, under four gigabytes and the um, exported file size is 43 gigabytes. So you can understand why I was saying you need to get yourself a good external hard disk because um, you'll fill up your hard disk really fast if you're doing a lot of these files. But if you want the highest quality, then this is what you've got to do. Okay, now I'm gonna go through how I set up a project and a sequence in Adobe Premiere. I'm gonna be doing it for a 1080p export to YouTube. Now, if you want the most high quality, you'll want to do this at 4K. And the reason I don't do that is just down to file size um, and you don't get the full benefits because it's not a 4K camera. Um, but the advantage of doing it in 4K would be that you'd get the better compression rate on YouTube. So next you wanna open Adobe Premiere. Um, I've got Adobe Premiere CC. This is the 2021 edition. Um, click New Project. Um, give it a name and pop it on the desktop. Um, I just leave these settings as is and go OK. OK. 
Okay, let's create a new sequence. I use the DSLR in 1080p at 30 frames per second. Um, just give it a new name. There might be a better setting than this, but this is what I use and it seems to work. Okay, now we'll have a quick look at how to import that video into your timeline. Now let's just drag and drop the file that we converted into the project and drop that onto the timeline. Now you want to click keep existing settings, otherwise you'll overwrite the sequence settings that you just created. Okay, we finally made it. Let's have a look at the fun part, how to reframe our footage with the GoPro FX plugin. Um, it's a really quite simple tool to use and the only limiting factor is gonna be your own creativity. So I'm just gonna go over the basics and hopefully that will give you a foundation that you'll be able to do much more creative things than I'm showing you. Um, so let's have a quick look now. Uh, now you can go into effects and just type in FX and you can find the GoPro plugin and just drag and drop that now onto the clip in your timeline. And you'll see that it now appears in the effects panel or the controls for the GoPro plugin. Now this video is a POV from a local descent near me. Um, and you can see it starts up by this pylon, which I think is quite a good illustration of the, uh, the lens curvature effect of the GoPro. You can see this pylon's bent right over. Um, but there's one really cool thing that you can do with the GoPro plugin. There's this control here for lens curvature, which lets you kind of reverse um, how much curvature you have on the outside of your image. You can see it's kind of straightened that pile on up. Um, and now um, it's obviously cropped quite a bit, but we can zoom right out and um, regain a lot of that image because we're starting from that 5.6K um image we've got a lot more pixels to um, to work with. Now you can see the horizons nice and horizontal um, you've got rid of a lot of that curvature. Um, next thing to do is to adjust the tilt angle of the camera now this will depend on how you've got it mounted um, whether it's um, a chest mount or you've got it mounted on your helmet um, just what angle it's at um, and it will also be affected by um, your position on the bike and if you're going down a steep trail or quite a mellow flat trail um, and if it's undulating and swap swapping from one to the other then you might find that you need to um, pop in some keyframes. So I've added another clip into the timeline because I think this will be quite a good clip to uh, illustrate adding keyframes. Um, this time it's the GoPro on top of a tripod so it's static and not a POV. Um, but yeah, let's do the same process again. Let's get the um, FX um, GoPro plugin. Um, just drag and drop that onto the video in the timeline. You can see that it's appeared up here in your effects control panel now. Um, if we click the top part here where it says GoPro FX reframe, then it will gray out that bar and you'll see that it's now put this frame around the, um, the video in the preview. Um, and now if you click um, left click and hold um, you'll be able to drag it across and pan around and tilt them and whatnot um, so that's a good start point so um, I'll just click in some keyframes by clicking the little timer symbol on these ones you can see they've appeared here now and now if I just scrub across a little bit um, I'll see I go out of frame a little bit over here so I'll Click the top of here again and just pull across and that's probably enough and you'll see that it's added automatically in these keyframes now. So if I carry on scrubbing across the timeline, do the same thing and we'll find myself again. So I ride my trials bike, I'm just looping around here and then I'm going to do a drop off. Um, so I'll just get myself up to about here. I might actually 
um, get rid of these. So I've added these ones in. I might actually choose to get rid of those ones. So we're just keeping it down to a minimum number of keyframe points. Um, but I think I might also lose that keyframe point for the zoom um, and just um, zoom in a little bit more as I'm a bit far away from the camera there. Um, and you can see it's clicked in an extra one. Um, if it doesn't click in an extra one, so if I pull along here, um, you can just click this button here to add in another one. Um, but I don't want another one there, so I'll just get rid of that. Um, so we'll just pull along a bit more, um, click on there again, and move along. Now, I want to make sure that we can see how high this wall is. Um, yep, yeah, so that's probably okay. We'll just move along a little bit more. And this is the position that I uh, drop off the wall from. So we'll try and get a nice um, framing of the, the drop now. I have to bear in mind that once I'm on my back wheel, then my head's going to be a bit higher and I don't want it getting cropped off. So, um, yeah, maybe something a bit like that. There's a bit of a lag on this window because um, I'm doing the screen recording at the same time. So um, it's slowing my computer down a bit. Um, but yeah, I think that's okay. Um, and now I'll hop off the wall. I've just not chopped my head off. Got a bit of a nice silhouette. Um, and when I hit the ground there, I want the camera to have moved. So I'm going to move down to... Whoop, move down to something like that and um, we've got those keyframes in and now as the as I drop off hopefully I've chopped my head off so what I want is these keyframes to be just here so that hopefully that hopefully will improve the shot a bit so now I'll get to there drop off I think I might actually want to zoom out a bit for these ones. So if I delete those two and I uh, get myself in, if I you can zoom in a bit so you can nudge along with the, um, the arrow keys along the timeline and then I can just change this one to 100 and add in a key frame, oh, switch that back to 100. Um, and that's added that one in there. So now I'm in shot and I'm just moving away again. So I'll just move around. So how long has this taken? So far this has taken about five minutes for a clip that is pretty much a minute long, I think. So it doesn't take too long to do. Um, and we're pretty much there now. Um, the one thing is that um, you'll see that because we've put these keyframes in, the motion that the camera is making between the keyframes is linear. Um, so it can look a bit notchy um, as it kind of goes from one keyframe to the other. And the way to solve this is if we select them, I'm just selecting them all, you might want to be a bit more picky, um, but just for illustration, I'll do it this way. So I've selected all those keyframes. And now if I right click on here, um, you'll see that linear is currently clicked, um, but you've got three options below it. Um, and these ones will all smooth out the motion um, between the keyframe points. Um, and you'll just have to play with them to see which um, is most suitable for um, when you're using it. But for this, I'm gonna use continuous Bezier. Um, and uh, if you want to dive deeper into this, then you can click the little arrow here and you'll be able to see this um, visual representation of the, the camera movement. Um, and you can uh, adjust it, fine tweak it with these little arms on um, the points. Um, but I'm not going to get into that today because that's a bit more advanced, but um, it really does 
smooth it out and make it look a lot more professional um, and less kind of robotic, a lot more like a, an actual cameraman's been um, panning around after you. Um, so that's definitely pro tip. Uh, if you've got these keyframes close together and there's a really quick movement, then you will find that you might get some motion blur. And that's because in, under the advanced settings, there's a box here called motion blur. And this is a really nice professional um, effect, but you might find it unsightly in some situations. So you might want to switch it off. Um, and the other reason you might want to switch it off is because it is quite intensive on the, uh, the graphics um, and will take longer to render um, and may slow your computer down. So it might be that you just want to switch it off while you're previewing it or and put it on for the final render. Or if you've a bit more limited with your computer, you might just want to leave it switched off entirely. But something I haven't done yet, but I would like to have a go at is trying to fake some kind of whip pan kind of motion blur transitions with it um, because there's the potential to be quite a cool little tool, I think. Um, so yeah, keep watching my vids and see if I... Um, do some of that, something like that in the future. Okay, you've finished editing your video, you're really pleased with the result. You think it's bound to get at least a million views on YouTube, um, but first, let's see how to get the best quality from Premiere to YouTube. Now this subject can be a bit opinionated um, and this is just my opinion on settings that I've settled on which seem to get me a pretty good result um, but you might have your own settings and if you think they're better then please let me know in the comments below. Um, like I said previously if you're going down the 4k route then you'll probably want to use some different settings at this point but I'm just going to go through my 1080p settings. So let's have a look now. Okay so now we want to go file export and then across to media. And if you haven't already, you want to be in the H.264 and then scroll down to the YouTube 1080p full HD. Um, I keep these settings the same. Uh, just careful if you're scrolling over any of these drops downs because they can change. And then I go for the VBR two pass and just crank it up to around about 20. Um, one last thing I change is the keyframe distance. I adjust this down to whatever the frame rate is for your project, which is 30 for me. And then click export. It will take quite a while to go over the two passes, but it's worth doing the second pass. Okay, well done for making it this far. I know this was a long video uh, and to celebrate, if you have made it this far, then you deserve a shout out. So pop a comment in the section below saying, I managed to watch the video right to the end and I'll give you a shout out in the next vlog. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I really enjoyed making it. Uh, if you do use any of the stuff that I've showed you and you upload it to YouTube, pop a link in the comments. Uh, I'd love to see it. It will really make it feel worthwhile me making these videos uh, if I see that people are going out and using some of the stuff they've learned. So yeah, thank you for watching. Until next time.